Hello again, it's me, isn't it? And what a way to return to football with Aston Villa 3, Southampton 4. Villa show a display of utterly poor football in the first half and come back in injury time to go to score two goals, but ultimately fall short from Southampton. And overall, um, what a really poor form of football that was from Aston Villa. Really, really disappointing. Um, you know, you think we're going from winning four games in a row against Liverpool, Leicester, Fulham and Sheffield United. We come off a 3-0 loss against Leeds and you think, OK, it might just be a little bit of a blimp um, and we might just come back into it. We're going into a Southampton team that is relatively um, not a difficult team to beat and we go out, we go out today and we play absolutely dreadful football. Um, and yeah, it's just, re- it's just really upset and really disappointed to see. And it just really... Feels like we're just going back to normal with Villa, which I don't want to see. You know, we're signing decent players. We're looking a much better team, and I don't really think, apart from the Liverpool game, um, of the results against Leicester, Fulham, and Sheffield United, we're not really flukes. I think we were much better teams, playing some much better football, and then we come into this performance and we just look absolutely dreadful. But fair play to Southampton, you know, their midfield completely signing stars and just looked like a much better team. Um, Four goals coming, three, well, the first three goals coming from set pieces. You know, Villa originally had gone down 1-0 after three minutes, but luckily VAR saved us there. And then just just from there, it just looked like Villa weren't bouncing back in those first five minutes. I thought after that, we did grow back into the game. We were matching Southampton. Um, but then really, somewhat quality just came through through Southampton from a corner, Vestergaard, uh, again, that header in, nothing that Martinez could have done. Uh, but McGinn just completely not marking his man and let Vestergaard go and score that goal um, with the header to put Southampton at 1-0. And then it's two free kicks from James Ward-Prowse, two very good free kicks. Let's not take it away from him again. Nothing really Martinez could have done. But my problem comes in the third goal with Matty Cash, a player that's been, for me, really good this season so far much so much how much quality he has but I think today was his worst game he was absolutely dreadful um you know clearly out of position so therefore he has to raise his hand just to try and stop the ball and practically just gives away the goal and almost costs us the game because if you think about it had that not gone in and he did stay at 3-3 we would have drawn the game um but really just gave it away from there not the confidence down in the Villa boys even much um, so we're going into half time three 0 down, not looking like we're getting any way back into the game. We come out in the second half, you know, starting a little bit brighter, and then instantly Ings gets the ball, whips it in. It's a beautiful goal in the top right corner. Um, and again, I think Martin is maybe a little bit better positioned. He could have been a little bit more to his centre. Um, but really, again, there's nothing much he can do to defenders. We're just staying off him, giving him the open space, just letting him run free. And we all know what Ings is capable of, how many goals he's already scored this season and last season. Um, you know, you want to give yourself, make sure you can consistently marking him again. Matty Cash, letting him go on the inside um, and letting him have that open chance to score. Um, but then again, 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 the second half, Villa come out much better. We're creating more chances. Trezeguet's getting in some good headers and kicks into the ball. But McCarthy's just saving them. Jack Reed is trying to get some opportunities, saving the ball. Um, and then I think it comes in from a bit of... Ollie Watkins, uh, Trez, not Trez, Jack Grealish, Matt Target link up. Jack Grealish whips in the ball and begins there, not begin, Mings is in there and gets the header in to put us at 4 1. And then in the dying embers of the game, in the last six minutes, we get a penalty, which Ollie Watkins goes and scores, which is really nice to see him. You know, if we're not going to get the win, at least give Ollie Watkins a goal, give him some confidence, and yeah, just essentially give him a goal, give him something to uplift his spirits. Um, and then two minutes later, Jack Grealish, a little bit of clever thinking. He catches McCarthy off guard, gets him on his near post and manages to score to make it 3-4. And you think, can we do it? Can Villa come back into it? But no, the game is gone there and the full-time whistle is blown. But overall, take away from goals. I'm just so disappointed in that performance. It's just not good enough for Villa. And I just think, yeah, as I said, as I said at the start, I just don't want to go back to normal with Villa. I don't want it to be another relegation battle. Oh, we're just going to be the bottom half of the table because we can be at the top half. We have got some good players there. But they're just not performing right now. And obviously, since we've lost these two games in a row, it's going to start to make people think, you know, maybe Dean Smith isn't the right man. We're going to be starting that all over again. Um, 
And it's just really annoying to see that. Because I think we could have matched Southampton if it wasn't for their goals. I don't think Southampton were doing a fat lot. Um, so it's just really annoying to see us lose in the manner that we did. I thought Martinez, as I said, I didn't think he had a bad game. Um, really, I don't think any of the goals were his fault. I just think defensively we were poor. Worst player on the pitch. You could have argued Matty Cash. Um, but for me, it goes to McGinn. He's absolutely dreadful again I don't understand it he's coming back into some brilliant form and then all of a sudden he just slips right down and for the whole 90 minutes he did absolutely nothing in the game it didn't even cross my mind that he was still on the pitch but he did nothing for the team often nothing and you're just screaming at him just bring her a hand on or just change it around somewhere um, so I don't really know what's going to be happening with McGinn he'll probably still play um, but I'd like to think that maybe Dean Smith sees what McGinn's been doing throughout the game, didn't offer anything, and will perhaps put Hurahan in. I thought Mings and Konza were fine, I thought Target was fine. Um, Douglas Louise was a little bit shaky, but again, didn't really offer us much going forward. I thought Ross Markey was getting into the game, but it's the final end product just wasn't there of him, he wasn't coming off. Um, Bertrand Troy did start for about 25 minutes, did get injured, but even then I didn't think he was offering anything. Um, so for me, in that sense, I think it would be an excellent impact. So because I thought Trezeguet, um, a little bit of our game did change around him. Again, the work effort was there, and he's he is producing. It's just not coming off in the end result that we want. Um, I thought Watkins was fine, but I think the problem with him is he's not getting the service, and when you don't get the service, you're not really able to get into the game as much. And I think that is the problem. You know, people criticizing Watkins. Um, but if the ball's not going to him, if he's not getting the clear-cut chances, what's he meant to do? He can't do everything around him. He's meant to be playing as our number nine. He's meant to be the one scoring the goals. He can't be in the midfield um, creating the chances for himself. And that's what essentially the penalty did come from. It did come from him um, trying to create something, moving out to that left wing, trying to make something happen there. And therefore, he did get the penalty. But... Um, yeah, at least he got the goal, gives him some confidence, and I still do have high hopes in him. And then I thought Jack Grealish was all right. Again, he comes into um, himself in the second half of the game. But that's the thing. Why does it take us to go three, four goals down and takes us the second half to actually put in a performance? Why can't we show it for the whole 90 minutes? Because as we've seen with those three goals scored in the end... You know, we can get back to him. We could have got back into the game. If Matty Cash hadn't been irresponsible and reckless with his um, judgment, you know, he didn't go for the handball. We could have maybe had something there. It's all ifs and buts if we'd taken our chances better. Um, but I think overall, it really just comes down to Southampton just being very well organised, very maintaining a solid line um, and really defensively just being much better than us. Um, and some people, it, was just, it just wasn't our game today. Um, so, yeah, it's just... It's disappointing, isn't it? We come so close. You know, we have a great start to the season. It comes crashing down straight game against Leeds and um, Southampton. And it does make you think, is this Villa just going back to the norm? Are we going back to a normal routine? It's going to be sticking around the mid-table. Um, yeah, let's, just, let's, let's hope they don't because really it shouldn't be. We've seen some good football from them. We've seen some good results, and I do believe they have the confidence and the players and the bits and overall the passion and the team spirit to stay in that top half. But we go into our next game against Arsenal. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. I think we probably are going to struggle, let's face it, Arsenal or not. Um, they'd like the teams we've been playing in Sheffield United um, with the player quality they have. But we, again, we did beat them last season. They're a very, very good team performance there. So who knows? We're going to hope that Arsenal are going to lose this match against Manchester United and hopefully give us something to look forward to. But then after that, we're going on to Brighton, West Ham and Newcastle. Three games that we can win, especially against Brighton and especially against Newcastle. You know, there's two games there that we can easily get six points from. But it's going to take a lot of a change around and a lot of performance from from Aston Villa and real kick up the backside from Dean Smith because really who knows how long Dean Smith could have if, if really nothing starts to change after those next few games maybe we do need to consider a different manager at the helm um, but yeah that's been my instant match reaction to Aston Villa 3 Southampton 4 really disappointing let us know your thoughts in the comments down below Nathan will be having a video out later today of these live reactions hopefully to the game but without further ado I've been Ben it's been me back on the channel hope you loved it I know you loved it up the villa with the pride of villa we'll see you later boys